right now it's really important i think to to kind of be a part of your community and, and speak to people speak to other practices ask people questions about how they're dealing with it just try and hmm. kind of collaborate and, and feed off each other that way episode 86 Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and this week we've got a special episode which has come from the spare rooms of my three guests and myself. I'm talking with Bobby Jewell, Rob Fine and Luke Neve, who are all PR maestros. We've had Rob on the show um, many times before. And in this episode, we discuss how to be communicating during this unusual time that we're having at the moment, how you can be communicating effectively during this crisis. And all three are specialists in PR with architectural clients and within the architectural industry, and they discuss a number of ways that we can still be broadcasting ourselves, how we can be networking, how we can still be communicating with our teams, some of the tools, the technological tools that we can be using, how we can be engaging with the press uh, in the right way, and how we can be evaluating and using this time as an opportunity to consider our marketing message from its core, you know, what the kind of values are that we want to be uh, expounding to the world, if you like, and how we can use now as a really great time to reevaluate that and, and have a look at our overall marketing strategy. And I think one of the most important messages of this is, is that this period, we don't know how long it will last, we don't know how long lockdown will go on for, but it will have an end at some point and taking the broad long-term view is incredibly critical and important both for our own uh, fulfillment and calmness and for the longevity of our businesses so sit back relax and enjoy Bobby Jewell, Rob Fine and Lucas Neve. So massive thank you to all of you for listening and supporting the Business of Architecture UK for the last couple of years. Big shout out to those of you who have come to our live events, attended the webinars, and of course to those of you who have downloaded the weekly podcast and have been listening to them on your bicycles. And as you know, we love helping architects win meaningful and profitable work, but it's not always that simple to implement these ideas or translate them into something that will work for you. So what I wanted to do was to to invite you onto a quick 15 minute chat with myself. We can both grab a cup of tea and I'd like to ask you about what content you found most valuable and why and what you'd like to hear more of. And I'd also love to hear more about your business, and what you're building at the moment and where you are headed to business wise in 2020. So there's no charge or any obligation with this call, just simply to find out how our content has been of value. And if we get that far and with your permission, of course, what might be next? What what might be possible and how Business of Architecture UK could be supportive of that. Does that sound fair? Brilliant. So if you want to book a 15 minute chat with me, I'm calling these calls the BOA UK discovery call or just simply a chat with Ryan. Use the link in the information and I look forward to speaking to you. Bobby, Rob, Luke, welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. Absolute pleasure to have you all here in these remarkably unusual circumstances i'm not going to use the word unprecedented because i've used it so many times <laughs> but i'm sick of hearing it um how are you all yeah good yeah, yeah. really good thanks good. for having us on yeah Absolutely. thanks for having us ryan pleasure and today we're going to be talking about communicating in a crisis now obviously uh, this is totally unique experience for most of us um has been anything like it and obviously as business people as business owners we want to continue keeping open and operating as much as possible and you know going with our outbound communication as well as our inbound communication to our teams and the, the kind of big question is how how do we do that how do we do that in this unique environment that we're in now are there do's and don'ts that we should be considering uh, when broadcasting and marketing ourselves and can we still market is it is it the right time to be marketing at all right now wow well, i mean i think that um what what we've seen or, or at least what i've seen 
is that um, there's been kind of like a timeline that people have been following. So the first couple of weeks, everyone's kind of been taking a step back, thinking about their business, um, which is really important, um, how they can protect their staff, all of those things that you need to think about right now. And we're kind of getting to a stage where um, more people are speaking and there's more conversations and, and it's become a bit more outward looking. Um, so I, there was a period of time where it wasn't appropriate to, to start talking about your business and what the projects that you're working on. But now is the time where you're starting to see more uh, pieces of information coming out. Yeah, one of the things is um, that it's, it's a universal in that everyone's been in this lockdown and now started working from home. And that shift um, has created kind of like a collective um, within the industry that will mean that everyone is kind of looking for engagement in similar ways. So now it means that everyone will be wanting to market or host events or talk about themselves via online channels. Mm. And so it's finding out one of those ones that actually work for you and like what kind of um, communities you can start engaging with or, you know, improve and get you engaging with um, that would actually work out for you as a practice. I think, I think also um, some people that I've been speaking to are, are, are using the opportunity to maybe think about the fundamentals of who they are and how they talk about themselves, um, like revisit that um, before they start, you know, broadcasting. So, you know, obviously for practices that me, uh, Bobby and Luke work with on a regular basis, they've already done that work. That's kind of yeah. like the first step, isn't it? Sorting out um, your kind of practice profile and uh, and who you want to be broadcasting to. But I think some people are, are doing that and actually doing that exercise or thinking about doing it now they've got a little bit of space you know it's a quite a good time to be a bit um self-reflective and, yeah, and in terms of yeah sorry go, on. go ahead no i was just saying in terms of like when you go talking about do's and don'ts i mean in terms of like do i think like everyone recognized like the authenticity of wanting to get it out and market yourself during this time and i think that's quite like I think that's a fine thing to do because everyone is as I was about to use the term unprecedented but I think uh, you know during this like kind of unstable time everyone is kind of like unsure about where their business will be going so mm. I think to promote yourselves and communicate your work I think that's a totally and if it comes from an authentic kind of place I think that's fine thing to push forward and I'd say I wouldn't be so worried about thinking of that as a don't. Yeah, I've, I've spoken to some architects recently who have expressed concern about, you know, being crass or, you know, uh, being unsensitive. And now's not the time to to be selling or to be marketing or you know, that there is there is a concern of how to how to do that. And then obviously, on the other hand, you know, everyone's, you know, particularly small to medium sized enterprises it's really critical to be uh speaking and broadcasting or sending out some sort of message and it doesn't necessarily have to be you know a sales message but certainly where like you said how we can be offering support and building communities right now now is a quite a, a key time to be doing that what, what are some examples that you've seen from some of your clients that have been doing this or navigating this well yeah, so one of the, it's not a client I work with as such, but I'm, I work with uh, a group of architects called the Architects Climate Action Network. And one of the things is like, it was formed a bit as a response to the climate emergency and looking at other groups like Extinction Rebellion and Architects Declare. And it was looking at like, what can you do as an individual in the climate crisis? And what were the things that we've been hosting over the past year that we've been formed are these open meetings, which is a case of a few people speak. And then the idea is that you go off into little groups and then you actively have to contribute to the conversation. And one of the things that we um, will be hosting on the 8th of April is an online version of that. And the idea is like to, you know, not that because it's not business as usual for a lot of architects, but one of the things that we can do with our engagement 
and that kind of like broader outreach is to try and keep it as business as usual, as usual as possible. So we'll be hosting an online meeting to kind of foster those kind of um, that kind of engagement and debate um, via online channels. So I don't think that in terms of events, I think it's a really strong opportunity now for everyone to start thinking about what kind of message would you want to be putting forward. And also the fact that people are sat at home and looking for things to do. They're looking to outreach and talk to other people. So if you've never done an event before, it might be a good time to try and do it online to see what kind of um, other people you can reach and what conversations you can have. I think, I think also um, now is not really a good time for holding on to information and ways of working right now is a good time to share and be a bit more be as open as possible because that can only make you seem like a generous and like positive and confident practice so um uh one of the practices i work with uh has done a lot of diary that was published uh, in architecture today which were, and they literally, they gave away all the trade secrets of what software they're using, um, how they're managing their time and their team, you know, and, and they even talked about their clients and some good news they'd had and, you know, about projects they're, they're working on and what stage they're at and how you deal with the shutting down of construction sites. So I, I think, I think seeming open and part of a community is more important now than it is in normal times. And uh, I think it show it signals to your clients we're totally on top of this. You know, it's it's not it's not business as usual, but we are we've got methods, we've got systems, and we're in a good good mood. And I think the people who come across as sort of Debbie Downers, uh, you know, are going to sort of not not instill a huge amount of confidence in people. Mm. Well, that's yeah. interesting. You, you say that the the Debbie Downers because um, I have a suspicion that some people might not realize when they're being Debbie Downers, what, what, what might constitute negative outbound messaging that you should just be aware of, do you think? I think certainly going silent is a, says more than you think it does. So I think completely retreating. Um, uh, uh, you know, there was... Um, I spoke to a practice who said who who have quite a popular newsletter. Um, people really like receiving it, and they always get a lot of clicks through to their website. And they said to me that they think they're going to stop that because they thought it was inappropriate. And I I didn't see I didn't agree with that at all because I just thought it's your you, you, you know obviously you, you you monitor your tone of voice, but mm. also sharing good content and, and nice news stories i think is um really positive and i've seen uh, there's a hashtag that has been trending which is um uh, normal is news which i quite like you know so to sort of suggest that just by just by sharing stuff that isn't about um pandemics um <laughs> is is welcome you know i think that's uh, yeah. it's an interesting point where you uh, said right i think it's uh it's the fine line between being uh, um, just morbidly depressing and but then actually engaging with problems that you've had um, there's an architect um, photographer I know um, I might as well is Chris Hopkinson is his name and he came back to the UK only this year and he's been quite open on uh, social media about the fact that it's really difficult time to find a job now he actually got an article mm. he actually reached out to architects journal yeah. and said look, this is actually a really bad position I'm in. And he was like really open and honest mm. about that. And I think that was a really good way of communicating like genuine fears and concerns, but turning it into a positive. Because as mm. I said, like he could have simply said nothing and simply like sat at home, been really frustrated with the situation, but by actively engaging with the problem no, and identifying what that was, he was then able to like communicate that out quite effectively. And I think that was a really good lesson to learn for any kind of practice who maybe are worried about losing work or, or um, being canceled or definitely on hold. The idea is like reaching out to other people and saying, like, look, I'm in this position. It's not good. And then for using that as a way to engage with other people. Yeah. yeah it's like creating that space, um, 
for people to relate them to that situation because they're in that situation too so they know like how they feel but um, I just wanted to pick up on something that Rob was saying about going silent. I think that um, the work that architects will be doing now to be more visible will pay dividends in a few months time when we kind of hopefully return to normalcy. Um, the architects that are speaking now, um, talking about their work, collaborating with people, will probably have um, a, a better chance of getting back in with the clients that they worked with originally, um, but also getting new clients. So it's like thinking, trying to think a little bit in advance as well in this period. That, I think that's a really important point actually, is that we need to see this as a kind of, you know, it has, we don't know how, when it will end, but it will end at some point. And so taking the long-term perspective of what it's going to be like when we come out the other side and it goes back to business as usual, and that's going to take a little bit of time as well. Um, the communication and the relationships that we're able to build now will hold good stead. And like Rob was saying, you know, you're demonstrating confidence or, or Bobby, you were just saying, just being authentic and, you know, actually having the courage to be vulnerable uh, in, a, in a public way you know it's not going to do any harm and it's and it does it takes courage to do to do something like that which you know people respond to it and will support yeah and i think in this um you know if you are an architect and now you're looking at um maybe you've got some downtime given that projects have been put on hold either this month or you know that's something that you will have to deal with in future um using this time to kind of like rethink your practice and think, you know, what is that we really want to achieve when it starts back again? You know, what is the kind of messages we want to get across with our work? What is the kind of research that we could be doing now or have been doing that mm -hmm. will be positive and useful to everyone? Mm -hmm. I mean, just as a shameless plug here, uh, one of the things that we are doing uh, between the three of us, like myself, Rob and Luke, is that we are launching these like online workshops uh, for practices looking to uh, have you know, want to, as I was talking about, have that rethink on or want to improve their communication strategies. And the idea is like we, we're using these online platforms like Zoom to, uh, you know, ha ha kind of host like a workshop as normal so people can rethink, um, look again at their communications and, you know, yeah, so I guess, things yeah, I guess it would be of use. Yeah, I guess sort of have a comms MOT. Is that a way of looking at it? Just, you know, uh, because um, you, they'll, you'll be doing stuff. Some people think, oh, I don't do comms, but you'll definitely be doing stuff. And, you know, whether you have a website, whether, you're, whether you engage with one or more social medias, whether you've ever tried to tell the world about a project you've done by the press or something else or a newsletter, you're engaging with comms, but it might just be a bit, scattergun or a bit disorganized and so perhaps now you could set up some streamlined you know talk to us or talk to yourselves but set up some streamlined ways of working so that it's more efficient just like you would on a project i guess you know um this is kind of thing exactly now is actually quite a good opportunity to do that inner work if you like of auditing how you're communicating both to your team you're communicating your culture have a little rethink how what's the relationship like with the press at the moment in terms of getting published a publication still happening is that still an appropriate thing avenue to be looking at because we're kind of talking here about ways that we can broadcast using new social media and technology what about the relationship with the press yeah so i mean um Pretty much every press that I've I know, a journalist I know is uh, it's uh, they're still business usual. They're looking, if not now. I mean, I've had journalists um, actually be contacting me saying like you know they're kind of desperate for any kind of content um, from architects kind of thing because I think people are in that mode where they're kind of being silent or shutting down and not wanting to not thinking about engaging with press in a similar way. Mm. Um, I think with architect like trade architecture press, you know. I think they're really looking for kind of built project 
work or looking at how architects um, are transferring to working from home. And that's the thing is like everyone kind of looks at the architecture and design industries as being quite forward thinking and progressive with their working culture. And I think it's like now is the time to kind of push, you know, what it is that you're doing that would be of interest to other people. The idea is like the architects understand space too. Yeah. And I think when you look at um, the fact that everyone is now spending so much time in their homes, um, they you know, the people are working from home. Uh, they need also using it as like a makeshift school and education facilities for their children. And then also you've got, you needing that extra time too um, for uh, leisure as well. And I think, you know, if the architects, one thing they should know is how to use that space and redefine it. You, you're, you're saying that architects ha obviously have uh, an expertise in how to use space. And at the moment we've kind of got a, I don't want to use the word captive, but it's sort of the word. <laughs> oh, it is, yeah. It is. Certainly in media terms, you talk about captive audience. <laughs> we've, got a cap we've got a captive audience. Literally, people who are locked down in their homes. I mean, I, I, I've been speaking to architects, uh, you know, now is a good time to talk to people about how they are using their, their, their re you know, with residential clients, you're going to have a number of people who are stuck at home. They're getting really irritated by their homes, their houses, how they're operating. Like you were saying, Bobby, using it as a, a makeshift school. There's a lot of opportunities there that in a playful and lighthearted and in a supportive way that architects can start opening dialogue around those types of conversations. Uh, and also there's a lot of potential clients or you know, developers who might normally be very difficult to get hold of or who have various sets of gatekeepers that protect them from the outside world who are now on Facebook, who are now scrolling around LinkedIn, uh, who are now easily getting distracted. Um, and if, if we're broadcasting, this is another opportunity to be able to, to make connections. Yeah, I mean, I've, I mean, Going back on one of Bobby's points about talking about uh, space, I have a theory that when we come out of uh, when we come out of lockdown and people are feeling a little bit more financially secure, I think you're going to see home improvements uh, are going to go through the roof because I can see I can see in our house, you know, people people looking around, eyeing up eyeing up windows and an outside space that could be extended into and just thinking, God, I wish, you know, I wish we had more light, more space, more, um, maybe, a, a, my neighbors are talking about building a, a garden room, you know, the, so that, uh, so that mum and dad can have an office or maybe one of the kids when he gets older can, um, can go in there and sort of revise and get away from his younger brother. So, yeah, I, you know, that you could see, depending on the scale of your practice, if you're a smaller practice willing to do um, extensions, I think you could see a boom time come out of this. But what's going to happen is, as you say, right now you've got a bunch of people who are going on to Zine, going on Evening Standard Homes and Property, going on all those sorts of things, and they're looking up ideas because if you've been furloughed, what else are you going to do? So... Um, you, what, it would be good if people are creating like Pinterest boards or I, you know mood boards right now. Uh, I would be getting your your stuff out there, and I think and I think uh, media outlets will thank you for sending it over. Mm. Is around the conversation of being crass and you know inappropriate communication, and we said silence is a kind of the worst thing to do. Is there anything else? Is there is there anything that you have seen or you could anticipate might misjudge the tone or the current climate that we should be aware of? I well, think I've... one thing that um, I would be cautious of is that one, um, at the moment, everyone's posts are acknowledging the situation. Um, they acknowledge that we're, um, on lockdown and that this is hard for everyone which is the right thing to do but I think after a while people will get tired of seeing um, posts about that and they'll they'll want to see 
posts about projects and work and that that sort of stuff I think there'll be a, a real fatigue um of that kind of post so at the moment it's work it's fine and I think it's appropriate to do that but there might be a shift I would say in a in a, in a month or so do you yeah, think I mean, that, yeah go on I just say, I just, one last thing I've, uh, I've heard from journalists who've said um, they've received press releases which are kind of saying under lockdown because of a global pandemic now's the time <laughs> that you might want to you know you might want to get a shed and get away from it all you know call it your you know call it your uh, bunker from the world you know and they are like no the journalists have been saying not cool not appropriate don't don't shamelessly work the angles to promote yourself as as luke says much nicer thing would be to do is here is our work here's a project um thought you might like it um you know try you know you're obviously you're trying to send it to people that is that that print that kind of stuff but you know yeah i wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't, as Luke says, I wouldn't constantly refer to it and, and try and uh, profiteer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you I think, I think. Oh. Sorry, I think, I think there are like, um, I think there are definitely times where it's appropriate to, you know, if the project has something to do with um, providing a solution for everything that we're experiencing at the moment, whether that's you know, helping to build temporary structures for um, helping nurses and doctors to test or something like that, like something that has like actual use uh, in this situation as opposed to a, an aesthetic thing. I think it's quite, it's relatively easy, I think, to tell if, it, if it's a bit of a reach. Mm. Yeah, and one of the things that I would also stress is like a golden rule in any kind of like press engagement is to do your research. You know, think about, you know, what it is that this journalist normally writes about and would they actually be interested in your work? And I think that kind of the relevance there is re is key now more than ever because I imagine like journalists are probably receiving quite a lot of material from press professionals like ourselves. Uh we were talking about, you know, the, the kind of the don'ts there about, you know, is now the time to design your little isolation shed or is there, um, you know, I've seen a lot of people designing things that are solving problems right now. So some really fascinating solutions like 3d printing that can be used for, um, you know, creating visors for the NHS or, you know, companies producing valves for ventilators and things like that. Are there projects that could be well thought out that could be presenting a solution, but also you run the risk of, you know, trying to solve something which isn't your place. Have you come across anything like that? that... It's kind of, it's, it's, um, I guess you've got to think about every case is different, but like what, um, what really is transferable here? I mean, like all the architects I know, they're really fantastic at what they do. It's about um, problem solving mm. via de design solutions. And I think that's a really transferable skill to have that can be um, applied to so many different things. And hope, you know, look at the kind of work that BDP have done recently mm. with tra um, transferring the Excel Center into a makeshift hospital, which is at, like, absolutely incredible given the speed in which and um uh, collective uh work that it took to execute that i think that's absolutely fantastic so i think like kind of more if you have a genuine solution that you feel would be of use in this crisis yeah. um like push that forward and then like, cage the audience and i think like given the people's reaction i think that'd be quite interesting i think also it's, uh, it's about looking ahead and timing so you know, we've mentioned like 3D printing of masks and, you know, um, responding to immediate NHS needs. But I've, you know, and so that's great. But if your practice doesn't do anything like that, if you can't, do you know what I mean? There's no point trying to jump on the bandwagon and pretend you have a skill you don't. Whereas, you know, I've been uh, to another practice who've been approached by 
a modular design like manufacturer they work with and they're like looking ahead and thinking well how can this technology be used in the future so say for instance if a lot of people become homeless or displaced because of what we're going through you know if there's if there's a need for shelter for various reasons then you know let's do the work now and then you know start so there are, there will be other future problems and if you can adapt something you've done in the past credibly uh, into a into a useful solution work on that but i think yeah trying to trying just to get in there i mean i have seen a few practices who've posted things on social media where they would only be able to make like you know three masks over you know in a in a month and you're just like you don't you know it's like you don't you don't, you don't have to be a part of something immediately you just i think you need to sit back and think what could we really genuinely do mm. to help yeah <laughs> I, th I think, think like uh, Rob, yeah. sorry, <laughs> um, I think um, actually Rob um, did touch on something there that is was really is really interesting is that um, revisiting work that you had done previously or have an understanding and experience in and seeing how it can be retooled to fit this situation. So I'm working with a practice that is doing a lot of work or has always done a lot of work in virtual reality and they're looking at retooling this process to fit a situation where they wouldn't be able to go to site with a, with their client and speak about the project so they can meet clients in virtual reality and it's just kind of looking at the ways that you can use your technology and the technology you're comfortable with and know how to use um, to, to help here um, can be really useful. It also comes back to the original point we talked about with knowledge sharing. I yeah. mean, it doesn't have to be uh, necessarily related to uh, the work that you do, but I've seen a lot of about how to kind of get your kids, you know, if you, you've got kids staying at home now, how to get them, um, you know, kind of the architectural skills or tools that you use and just get them engaging with that too. What about communicating internally? to your teams do you have any advice obviously because now we're in this uh, situation where lots of practice lots of practices remote working is totally new situation and many practices i know or many architecture uh, studios have been almost ardently against remote working for a while now lots of practices are coming in and finding actually it works quite quite well do you have any advice or suggestions about the do's and don'ts of marketing and comms internally um i mean it's it's probably it's kind of a given but regular meetings regular catch-ups and meetings really important i think it was important um before um the lockdown anyway but continuing to keep in touch with people um is so important in your practice at the moment i think also um it's good to keep in mind that people's productivity might not be the same as it was working in the office. Um, you know, it, it might change <laughs> over the next couple of months once people become more comfortable working from home, but it, but it might, they might just find it harder. And I think being risk realistic about that, being realistic about the output of your staff is also really important. Um, I think so also that's, that's a couple of advice I would give. Yeah, and I think it's also I think it's also about thinking about their mental health, everyone's mental health in this situation. So I've you know I've been I've I've, I've been lucky enough to sort of see some of the inner workings of practices I'm working with via Slack or um, you know or, or entire team catch ups, and and what what I've seen works really well is if there are moments where you can keep stuff light hearted. So in the office, you would be sharing funny things you've seen or have, you know, conversations around the water cooler kind of thing. So trying to take that online um, is really healthy. And I've heard of some people who are organizing these sort of uh, buddy systems so that everyone has one person that they contact at the end of the working day to make sure that they're okay and sort of have a little chat. And then people are continuing Friday night socials, you know, online. And um, I think 
I think as an employer, you have to remember that you are still responsible for all these people, even if you're not physically sharing a space. Mm. And I know that some companies have had to furlough staff, you know, there's just no other way around it. And, but what they're doing is not taking those people off the group chats because otherwise you're, because they're not, it doesn't count as working, you know, which you mustn't do, but I think they need to, they need to be kept up to speed with what the practice is doing. Yeah. And it's also like um, uh, looking at tools you can use to better uh, manage your staff online. Like I know a lot of clients who use uh, Trello, which is like a really effective tool because, you know, you can uh, put up a a team objectives, goals, or speak to people as individuals or within uh, breakout groups. And that's really um, useful in terms of like keeping that normal structure that you would have in a practice going online. Great. I saw um, you were talking about the, the kind of the snapshots of all the of all the team. I saw this wonderful image of uh, RSHP last week, mm. and I think I know people. Everyone's posting these images at the moment of of their Zoom calls. Actually, I might do one right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good idea. But they're 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 lovely. I really like them, and I think they kind of uh, we forget that an architectural practice is made up of all these individuals. And actually the visual representation of all these faces and everyone. And there's something sort of lovely and personal about how everybody's made a makeshift home office at the edge of their beds or in the kitchen or something like that. That's a very sort of shared experience right now. And as you, and as you say as well, the importance of where you can bring some humor into stuff. I think that is, it's underestimated how powerful that can be for both ourselves our team and, and clients. I think, I think the, um, I think it's interesting you mentioned that because we were, we were talking once before that we think, we think the zoom portrait thing probably has a sell by date. But, but, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that's the end of sharing things. So I think, <clears throat> I think <clears throat> I predict that you'll see people sharing insights into what what are your office plants you know or how are you how have you restructured your space or what music are you listening to you know like album covers you know what i mean like i think there are there are continuing to <clears throat> sort of broadcast from each from our own little microcosms mm. i think will be i think will be welcome um and whether you know whether you do that through um drawings little curated photographs you know whatever you feel like, I think, I think it, that will be well, as you say, it'd be well received. People need a smile, don't they, on their face? Yeah. I saw that. I saw this wonderful video yesterday of uh, somebody who was in a Zoom meeting and she'd left, the woman had left the room and it was a big office one and her husband walked in naked to like oh, change, no. change <laughs> the <time. clears throat> that's, that's a, that's a, that's a do. <laughs> do for me i think that's, that's the kind of openness that we need you know we need it we need those smiles we need those did, you see, smiles. did you see the, yeah that the, needs to be scripted set up a vi- for a viral marketing campaign <laughs> did, you, did you see the woman in america who did microsoft teams and she turned herself into a potato yes <laughs> yes <laughs> you know that's that's great and you look normally twitter is a sewer of commentary but if you look at the comments on that post, there's thousands of people who are saying that it's cheered them up. Yeah, that, that was one of the posts at the beginning of the week that had me laugh out loud numerous times yeah, every, every time I saw it. <laughs> Just trying to deal with something serious, looking like a potato. Brilliant. And I know architects don't always do funny very well, but we've all got to try. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Is there anything else that you'd, you want to you wanna say or...? Um, I don't, I mean, we've, uh, we've kind of talked about this a little bit already, but it's just, um, collaboration and your networks at the moment are so important. And if you're not part of a group of architects, whether that's, um, the climate action network that Bobby was talking about or the London architects group or, um, an RABA subgroup there, there are lots of different groups that you could be part of right now. It's really important, I think, to, to kind of 
be a part of your community and, and speak to people, speak to other practices, ask people questions about how they're dealing with it. Just try and mm. kind of collaborate and, and feed off each other that way. And also just continuing to network. Um, I've made a point at introducing myself to quite a lot of people that I, I might have talked to, you know, in a few months time, but I've taken this opportunity to reach out and speak to people. Um, in different places internationally just to see what they've been working on and how they've been dealing with it and it's been mm. really really useful for me to help figure out what what i need to do as a comms professional and also what advice i can give to practices so um i do that if if you're not doing that already that's a, a great point actually to keep networking during these times and I, i've also found now has been a really interesting uh, a moment to to reach out internationally um, and to start talking with people that I wouldn't normally talk with and just jump on a Zoom call and speaking with somebody in Indianapolis or somebody in Puerto Rico and it's it's mind bending actually that it's that that's possible but we're living in this world where that is totally a reality that we can kind of and I, I yeah. hope I hope to see actually <clears throat> this this um, starts to bring about a rise of more collaborative working with small architecture practices and small teams um, and to figure out ways of pooling together resources and even doing that across nations you know doing that internationally because there's there's no once you've kind of got the inner workings of an office sorted there's not much reason why we can't start linking up and kind of you know building chains of collaborative teams to to approach problems and I, I had one other thing I wanted to say. Yep. Much more prosaic than global collaboration. But um, awards. Awards are still running. And if you don't have time to do a press release and you don't know which journalists to contact and you don't, uh, uh, and you, you don't have that sort of outer network, the awards, a lot of the awards are still running. They're very clear with what you're supposed to submit. And if you get shortlisted, already your project is going to get promoted for you. Often awards come with their own uh, media connections. Um, I, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with awards ceremonies for networking, but um, certainly to be peer reviewed and to be shown to be uh, at the top of your game is a good thing right now. Yeah, and those um, award ceremonies that, you know, potentially might shift online, the big institutions who run them have also um, taken a huge step themselves. Like only this past week, Architecture Foundation, London Festival of Architecture, Dezine, London Architecture Diary, they've all come out and said, we're looking for digital events to promote because I think everyone's in the same boat mm. and everyone's looking for that kind of... Um, uh, distraction or engagement kind of thing and I think yeah just if you can take them internationally and see and push them see how far you can go you know have a panel of speakers that's truly international um, but for a British audience I think that would be really interesting to see what kind of events would come out there and definitely like pushing the collaboration collaborative element to that would be key for making them interesting and entertaining and worthwhile I love it great some fantastic ideas there Gentlemen, thank you so much for your contribution uh, this morning. Absolutely brilliant to hear from all of you. And I hope you all keep well and safe and look forward to meeting up in, the, in, an, in a real environment yeah. soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks right. very much, Ryan. Thanks, thank Ryan. you. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to book your 15-minute chat with me by using the link in the information. I look forward to speaking with you. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.